Hey guys, my name is Carly and today I'm going to be telling you how I passed all four parts of the CP exam as well as how I studied and which order I recommend you taking the parts in. So my journey with the CP exam began back February of 2018 and during that time I was in my last year of college. I was finishing up my master's in accounting at Binghamton University and basically I knew I had to conquer this inevitable yet really stressful um, four exams that I had no idea how hard and how much time of my life that they would take up, uh, but I would soon find out. So basically, as I said, I started last February and my goal was to start with FAR. And if you're kind of new here, there are four parts. There's FAR, REG, Audit, and BEC. And typically FAR is known as the hardest one. Um, however, BEC is sort of the easiest one and either people usually start with the easiest or the hardest. And so I was going to start with the hardest one to try and knock it out get it out of the way and you know move on from there um yeah unfortunately this wasn't a great idea because so I started studying in about February March and then I took my first exam which was far in May of 2018 I took the exam going into it having studied very diligently um, and I was really ready so I took the exam and First off, you have the multiple choice, and then after that comes the simulations. And I took so much time in the multiple choice that I only left about an hour and a half for the sims. And this is a four hour exam total. They basically tell you to budget your time um, doing about an hour and a half on multiple choice and about two and a half hours in the sim. So I really screwed it up. Um, and yeah, basically when I got to the sims, they were really hard and I kind of started to panic that I knew I wouldn't have enough time to finish and basically that just kind of blew my exam right there. So basically after that, um, I found out my score that I did not pass and with that, I knew that it would probably be better to move on to an easier section to kind of boost my confidence and just get one out of the way that hopefully I can come back to FAR at a later time and pass it then. So basically what I did was I studied BEC while I was interning at a big four over the summer and I would come home every day uh, and study about for an hour and a half after work and I eventually took BEC and passed it. After that, I went back to FAR. I just knew I needed to get it out of the way. So when I went back for my final semester in the fall of my master's in accounting, I spent a lot of time studying for FAR. Basically, I went through all of the modules again. I went through all of the simulations again. I took all the mock exams again. I did a lot of work for this and I, I think I ended up taking it in uh, about November or December of 2018 and I thought it was just as hard as the first time. However, what I did do better was one, I was more prepared and two, I budgeted my time so much better. I spent a lot less time on the multiple choice. I kind of stuck with an answer. If I was stuck on one, I kept moving forward and I would come back to it at the end. And then I left a lot of time for the simulations, which is what I highly recommend you guys to do. So basically, after I found out that I passed FAR, I was so, so, so relieved. I could not believe my eyes when I found out the score. I thought it was just as hard as the first one. The only difference was that I left enough time for the sims and I can actually figure out and think about what the question was asking me. So I was so thankful to get that out of the way. And then from there on, I had to tackle reg. And for a lot of people, reg is a big challenge because tax isn't their strong suit. And for those of you who don't know, reg is comprised of tax and business law. So with tax reform um, that just you know rolled out, we got tested on the new material because I was gonna be taking it in the beginning of 2019. So basically, I started studying in about December and I believe I took reg at the end of January. And for me, this part was definitely the most interesting because it's so applicable to everyone. And this was what I um, had done my internships in, and this is what I was going to be going full time in. So I had definitely some familiarity with reg, and when I went to take it, I definitely felt very prepared, 
Um, however, it was still pretty hard, and luckily I was able to pass this on the first try. Then, uh, before actually finding out the score of Reg, um, I just wanted to try and bang out Audit as well, which is the last part of the four. So I started studying for Audit. I had about three weeks to study. I started um, in like the second week of February of 2019, and then I took it uh, at the beginning of March of 2019. And then I found out that I passed both Reg and Audit um, about mid-March. So I was so thankful when I found out I passed both of them. And what really seemed like the turning point for me was passing FAR. Once I passed that, I kind of knew I could do the other sections. Uh, for some people, they do struggle with Reg and Audit, and everyone has their strong suits. So I don't blame you. I think they're all very challenging sections. Um, however, I had the confidence once passing far to really just nail down the last two. So basically, if you're unfamiliar with the process, once you pass all four exams, you then need a year's worth of working experience working under a CPA. If you're from certain states, you're also going to need to pass an ethics test, uh, which I've yet to take, and I'm about halfway through getting my experience hours. So. Yeah, once I have all that, once I have a year's worth of working experience as well as passing my ethics test, then I will be a licensed CPA. Now that I have passed all four and I can look back, in hindsight, I would definitely suggest for anyone who's going to be embarking on this CPA journey to definitely start with an easier part first. I think starting with BEC or audit, which are the two that I found most easy, um, that you should probably begin with one of those just because it is really important to get one under your belt, pass one, so you have the confidence to continue on. Because when I first failed FAR, I felt like I lost all hope, I thought I would never pass these exams, I thought that all the other exams would be just as hard as FAR, and that um, I would never pass and I was wasting my time, which I'm sure a lot of people fail feel um, that are taking these exams. So for me personally, I would recommend doing BEC first, audit second, reg third, and FAR fourth. I know a lot of people have failed FAR at least one time, and I feel like if you have the other three passed and FAR is kind of your last thing to worry about, then you can take it kind of a couple times if you need to, and then you'll be done. The only thing with this is if you do take the easier sections first and you know you take a couple tries on each of them, then you have far left to take, you need to pass all of the sections within 18 months. So say you take about 16 months to pass the first three and then you have two months left for far, well you better pass it or else you're going to lose your first part that you took. So it's really, really important timing wise to really think strategically about it. If you are really, really strong in financial accounting, which is what FAR is, then maybe take that first. However, um, I would recommend taking business environment and concepts first because um, it's very general business. There's a lot of different topics, things you kind of learn in your freshman year of college. So I highly recommend that. It's a thinner book. Um, I don't have the book with me here, but I did find two of them. I have, this is um, auditing. I use Becker to study. And then I have reg right here. This is regulation. Um, so basically I used Becker. At first I didn't think that they were good enough. I thought that maybe I would need some supplemental material because I didn't think that they were going to get me through it, um, but they did. So I'm really happy with how uh, my Becker material went. Okay, so now I'm going to move into sort of my study process. And I know that every single person has a different studying process. Some people like to do a couple hours a day, some people like to cram it in on the weekends and study all day. Personally, I was more of the diligent kind of every day I study a little bit and by the end you should know what you're talking about. So how I did this, um, I really just 
made it part of my daily routine, the same as brushing your teeth, the same as going to the gym. You just really had to find some time that works best for you and just keep studying a little bit every day. Um, just a disclaimer, I know this study method is not going to work for everyone. Some people have longer attention spans, I don't. So I was only ever able to study a max of like three hours a day. Some people will just take the weekends and cram it all in um, for a couple weekends before their test and that's good enough for them. Um, however, I still like to go out in college. It was my last semester, pretty much. Um, my last two semesters, I guess. And I wanted to still have fun. So I needed to find a way to study and still have fun and still do my schoolwork and still go to the gym and yeah, have time for everything. So that's kind of what I'm going to be talking about now. So if you don't know what Becker is, basically they give you those textbooks that I just showed you and then it comes with an online module and basically the first section of the module is uh, the Becker instructors instruction. The Becker instructors will go over with you um, the chapter and or the module I guess and they will basically read word for word what the book says and they will give you examples which is really nice. And once they go through that material, then the second step is going to be the skills practice. And these are basically open-ended questions, but they give you the answer. So they're really good practice and I recommend you doing them. The third part is the multiple choice questions. And they have these at the end of every module and I recommend you doing every single one. And when you don't know why an answer is what it is, I recommend you looking into um, the answer and then re-practicing that question. So each book is different, each section is different, but each section will have about six to eight chapters and within each chapter is maybe like four to ten modules, something like that. So personally for me, I try to do about two modules a day. Um, and how I would basically plan it out is I would pick a preliminary uh, test date and I would work backwards and basically make sure I have about a week to 10 days to review and then I would schedule out the chapters from there. And sometimes you'd have to push and do more than two modules, you know, it wasn't always fun and games, but um, that's basically how it worked out for me. So once, so once I basically scheduled out my itinerary for studying, uh, I would begin and when you first open the first section that you're going to take and they start reading off all this information to you, I started to panic because I was like holy shit like how am I going to remember everything that they're saying, they're talking so fast, do I pause, do I just let it play, what do I do, do I try and take notes like word for word and you need to just keep going. You can't take word for word notes of what's happening. I like to underline or highlight as they were talking and I would let actually play it I think on 1.25 speed if that was a possibility and I just wanted to kind of get through it, understand the general idea and then let the skills practice as well as the multiple choice reinforce a lot of the examples. Of course, if I was stuck on something, I would pause it, I, you know, I would really try and digest it, um, but I wasn't going to take detailed notes. That would take absolutely forever, but everyone has their own study method, so I'm not canceling out anyone else's study methods. So basically, once I kind of got the hang of it, I would do about two modules per day, and that's kind of what suited me the best. I would do the lecture, I would do the skills practice and I would do the um, multiple choice and then the last day I would usually leave it for the sims. The sims are at the end of every chapter and do the sims because I know a lot of people that didn't do the sims and that's not a good idea because that's the hardest part of the exam to do the sims. So basically I would do this process until I got through all of the material and Basically, this might take me one month, this might take me two months, but you know, I obviously try to do it in a timely fashion because you don't want to forget everything that you learned in the first chapter by the time you get to the eighth chapter. So it's important to definitely kind of take those mock progress tests, 
things like that you want to make sure you're kind of keeping up with what you did in the beginning and it's important to you not forget too much so basically my kind of daily routine was um, I would wake up I'd make myself some coffee I'd go straight to my desk and for those of you that know me you know that I'm a morning person so when I would wake up it'd probably be like 6 6 30 a.m. that's just what worked best for me I'm a morning person I loved it once I had my big hot cup of coffee I was ready to go I would study from about maybe 6 to 8 um, I would then make some breakfast, take a little break, come back, study a little bit more, and then I would go to class, and then I would kind of come back, go to the gym, do my homework, uh, make dinner, and then if I kind of had some time at the end of the night, then I would study a little bit more. So this is kind of my daily routine. Um, I really kind of enjoyed it. It was a very like diligent process. Um, I think you need to be motivated in order to pass a CPA exam. I know everyone isn't self-motivated, but I do think that if you get into a good enough routine that anyone can pass this. And even if you are one of those people that, you know, you don't want to kind of study during the week, you just want to save it all for the weekends, that's great. Then study, go to the library, study for eight hours straight, and, you know, try to get as much done as you can. Maybe um, one chapter a day, you know, do two chapters a weekend and then you can do four weekends and you'll basically be done with all the material. So, so next I'm going to basically tell you about my review process. So once I've gone through all of the material once, I had a review process that I eventually kind of nailed down. And I think this was really important when reviewing because as I said before, you do end up forgetting a lot of the stuff in the beginning of the chapters um, that you really need to memorize. So now I'm going to tell you a little bit about the review process that I had. Everyone's review process is different, but I'm just going to tell you what worked for me. Step one was I did not use the Becker Final Review. The Becker Final Review is just a little textbook that coincides with an online kind of like PDF interactive thing and I think I used that for like my first FAR test and then I realized that it just wasn't working for me, that kind of wasn't a good way to review. So I eventually just made up my own review method. So my review method was doing one chapter a day, that's right reviewing one chapter a day and for a lot of people you're probably going to be like how do you like review a whole chapter in a day well step number one is you're going to need a blank white sheet of computer paper and i like using computer paper because there's no lines you can kind of freeform your notes and that's just honestly what works best for me. That's how I always study in school is with white computer paper. I hate line paper. It's just like a weird thing about me, but basically, so basically what I do is I take my eight and a half by 11 piece of computer paper and in the Becker website, there are these outlines. And what I do is I take notes on the outline of each chapter. So if I'm reviewing chapter one, what the first step that I would do is I would open up the outline um, online. I'd have my piece of paper in front of me and I would take notes on the outline. So a lot of this was probably stuff I had forgotten in the beginning. This was just a really good summary of the whole chapter itself. From there, I would still have my white piece of paper and then I would go through the actual physical book chapter because I wanted to make sure the outline wasn't um, omitting anything that was really important. So I'd flip page by page, I'd write down any formulas that were necessary on my white piece of paper. I would write down anything that I felt that the outline left out, some things that were more in detailed, and this is just really important, and I would break it out on my white piece of paper by module so I could kind of have a chronological order in my head, um, which helped me remember the material. I would write out the mnemonics. Um, that's a really important thing. I highly recommend you memorizing a lot of the mnemonics as well. So once I went through the chapter, um, both through the PDF summary as well as the book itself, I would then take a 10 question 
and you know it doesn't have to be 10 questions but I kind of like to make it a little bit easier on myself I would do a 10 question progress test the progress test is a feature in Becker where you can choose um, however many questions you want to take a test on and for which chapter so I'd choose chapter 1 and I'd choose 10 questions or I'd choose 15 questions and I would kind of see how I was doing with that once I did that, I kind of covered the lecture aspect, I covered the multiple choice aspect, and now I redid every single sim. Yeah, it was brutal. But if it was a sim where it was kind of unnecessarily repeated steps, okay, you know, like a amortization table, I, I know I don't need to find every single answer to that, so obviously once I do one or two, I have the hang of it and I don't need to keep repeating. So once I went through the chapters, this PDF summary, the progress test, and redoing most of the sims, then I felt I had a complete and accurate review of the chapter. And I would do this in one day, and it really would not take me more than three or four hours. And you can break it up however you want. And I would do this for however many chapters there were a uh, day straight. Okay, so sorry, my camera died and uh, it's now dark out, so we don't have any more natural lighting, that's okay. So the last part I basically want to talk about is the last steps in the review process that I personally did, and that would be taking the mock exams and then reviewing my little study guide that I made on the white piece of paper. So I think now Becker gives you three mock exams. And so I made sure to take all three and then I would review it um, like maybe an hour later. So the mock exams are four hours. You need to take it kind of as if you were going to take the real thing. At least that's what I did. I know some people just click through it just to get the answer so they can get more practice questions. Um, however, I highly, highly, highly suggest taking it as if it's the real thing. Um, I wouldn't say it's definitely a good indicator of what score you'll get. Um, however, I did receive a lower score on the mock exams, which coincided with my lower score on FAR. And then for audit, which I did um, like okay on, um, I passed on the first try, I did do really well on the mock exams, which was a decent indicator of how I actually did on the exam. So I definitely would recommend taking the mock exams as if they were the real thing and then once you do that you review the questions and then you review your notes that you just took and that's pretty much all I did. Um, I didn't study super heavy the day before. Um, I did make sure I had uh, most of the mnemonics memorized as well as kind of looking over the things that I wasn't as sure on and didn't come as natural to me. So the last thing I'm going to say is get your CPA done if you can before you start working. Um, I'm so, so, so thankful that I had the opportunity to get this done before I finished work. Basically, if you were curious on my timeline, I did my master's and bachelor's in four and a half years and most people do it in five and I just did it because I had enough credits so I figured why not, you know, kind of do it in that time period. And then my full-time position wasn't due to start until October of 2019. Um, however, I did end up getting it pushed up a little bit until July of 2019. And I had about a six-month gap between graduating in December to my job beginning in July, which I did have time to finish up my CPA exam then, which I'm so thankful for. I know not everyone has this luxury. Um, however, I do highly recommend maybe trying to plan it out so that you can get it done before you start working. From my own personal experience at work, I do still have friends that are still trying to finish up the exam and just with, you know, busy season and trying to just like live your life and like have fun outside of work, um, it's not an ideal situation to have to study before or after work, I know. Um, it's really important, especially if you work at a big four and you want to move up to manager, you need your CPA, so this is something that is really important if you do want to um, excel and move up in the field. However, um, if you unfortunately do not have the ability to get it done before you start work, 
um, there are some tips and tricks that I recommend. Um, I had to study one of my parts during my internship, which was a 40 an hour, 40 hour a week um, internship. And basically what I would do was I would come home from work, I would study for about an hour and a half, and that's really all that I had in me. Um, so it was a bit of a slower process for BEC, but it did end up working out because I was still consistent with my studying. And if you, if you have time at work, you also can study. I know some of my friends who are still finishing up the CPA exam, shout out them. Um, they have downtime at work in non during in uh, non busy season times and they're able to uh, study a little bit so that's cool you can also study during your lunch hour I know that's not fun but you know if you really want to get it done I recommend that uh, you can study in the morning if you want to wake up early things like that and I know it's really hard to be motivated to study uh, before or after work but all I would tell myself was when I was doing my internship, just five minutes. Just give me five minutes, just study for five minutes. And five minutes would turn into ten minutes, would turn into an hour. Because once you really decide to do it, that's it. You're, you're good and you know, you're able to study. But it's the actual putting pen to paper, deciding to get up, sit down, and then start studying. That's the hardest part. That's also what I tell myself when I don't want to go to the gym, just pedal on the elliptical for five minutes. That's all you need to do is five minutes. And you know, it always ends up being about an hour. So yeah, that's my um, CPA exam story. If you want to hear more stories like this about CPA, about um, life at a big four, if you want to hear my college story at Binghamton, please let me know. Um, I'd be happy to share it for you. So thank you. Bye.